Greetings, everyone. Thug Doug here, back for some more Blitz. Uh, today I have a fan challenge. I'm gonna play um, from the stars. So let's uh, let's get going. First fan challenge. Very cool. Okay, he's we're starting. Here we go. Got a queen pawn game. See how he handles the English defense. We're going to pin that knight. Kind of in the spirit of a Nimzo. Okay, let's get some control over e4. I know it's supposed to be knights before bishops, but this, this uh, opening is strangely bishops before knights. Very strange. Not a not a top flight opening, but it's it's kind of fun, and I know it pretty well. So and kind of interesting because it, in a way, it re really resembles a Dutch. I think some of the transpositions are pretty pretty close to a Dutch defense. If you don't have to worry about like the any of the gambit lines or any of the you know the, the weird lines, okay, let's just keep developing. I think the bishop d2 lines are pretty good, just solid and not, not getting a uh, weakness on uh, with doubled pawns that way. Probably going to voluntarily take that knight next if he doesn't play a3, if he castles him. I want to um, clarify a little bit in the center, bring a knight to e4. Make a little room for pieces, trade, trade some miners, kind of play for um, an e5 break perhaps. So d6, and we can take that uh, take that bishop whenever it seems appropriate. I'm not in a huge hurry to take it right now. Yeah, I'd like to develop my knight d7. Eventually, after I take that bishop, um, a queen either e7 or e8 or maybe f6, I'll slide the queen towards um, some control on the e file, get it off the e file, and uh, maybe. I nudge it towards the king side a little bit. Okay, so this is probably my chance to play. Uh, let's think about this for a second. What if I play queen g5 here? So if I play queen g5, I'm threatening to take a piece with the mate thread on uh, G2. And if he takes it, I'll take with the bishop. And that's a double attack on queen and the mate threat. So that would be good. But can he just play bishop f3? Queen g5, bishop f3. And then what do I do? The knight. It's my bishop, I take the rook, he takes my rook. I takes the bishop, the rook takes my rook. That doesn't seem to work for me. So I guess that means I'm taking the bishop. Too bad that didn't work. That would have been nice, but it doesn't. Assuming he's going to take it to queen here. Right, let's get our development before we get too carried away with anything else.
F3 maybe. Oh, it's going to go right for that. Let's trade. Yeah, that seems that seems pretty reasonable. Neutralize that bishop, and uh, I can go here now. Followed up with them. Um, push to e5. It's kind of been my my thinking all along. Position simplified a little bit. Now it's going to be more of a see if I can get some sort of um, grip on the center. Maybe I'll play a5. Hmm. Maybe not. E5 here and now. Oh, I've got control. Let's get that in. If he plays, if he plays E4, then I've got a decision. Plays E4. Could just bring the rook over to um, E8. Let's try and keep control of everything. Okay, that's interesting. So that actually gives me a little something to play for now with that pawn duo. Um, I think I want to stall him on the queen side here. Plus, uh, maybe I can get my knight to c5 and uh, make some use of. To C5 square. Not sure what I'm going to do if he plays E4. I've got I've got options in that position. Could push by. I could take and play Knight C5. I don't really want to play E4 myself. I don't want to give his knight a, a way into um b4 and then e6, b4 and c6. That's a very sensitive square for me. I want to keep this knight out of my, my e6 square, especially. OK, that's kind of what I thought. Just a question, do I want to play? No, oh, this is interesting. What if, no, no, it doesn't work. If I take the pawn, it takes, I think I'm going to take, I'm going to keep this semi open. Let's bring the knight in. I may just play pawn to e4 now. Oh, the knight's kind of solidified there. Just kind of depends. Let's see what he does here. Um, he's running low on time. He'd actually asked for a longer time control, but um, we're kind of doing the 5 3 stuff now. So, uh, what to do here? This is kind of a crucial decision. Do I want to, if I play pawn to e4, he's going to take my queen. He'll have to, otherwise this is, um, unless he'll be hit on for the f2 square. So he'll take my queen, rook takes, knight will come to e4. Double and then uh, let's play that. I think this will be okay. I think I've got enough activity here. This will be pretty interesting. And I do seem to have some control over e6 now with, um, with the knight and the rook. So that's that's good. 
Is this end game favorable for me? I don't even know. It may not be. Can, can you round up that uh, that e pawn? It is kind of kind of hanging out there. Running all the time. I guess we're going to take. Oh my God. Is that, that going to work? Is it, is it going to become a problem on, uh, on like seventh rank? I take as night takes. Take, night takes. I wonder if I can just um, work on the e file right now. Mm. Have to take could be a real a series of exchanges here. I think it double on the e file actually. Okay, I've got to play a little quicker here. Better, to, better just move at this point. He's, well, I thought he should have taken with the, the knight and kept uh, kept the e file open. The way to go. All right, so let's take. And then um, let's grab the e file. That seems to be where the action's at. Okay, so he's going to go there. All right, so we're going to take. And then now what? Now I need to bring my king into the game here. Into space. Somehow I've really gotten myself into some time trouble here. I think I need to reroute the knight to um E5, let's bring it to E5. Position here. Um, this could be a draw. He has one tempo. Uh, it's just one tempo. Okay, I'm gonna do it. Take to take and play h3. Two, uh oh, oh boy, didn't do it. Now that's bad. I think I took this pawn. Ah, man, that was a close game. Good, well done. Nice, nice. I don't know. I think I could I think I could have been either. I don't think I was winning at the end, that's for sure. Um, let's take a look here. Um, let's see here. Go right to the very end. This is the position right here. Is he better? He is better. But it looks like it might be a dead draw here. King takes and then H3, right? Oh no, he's still got that tempo. But he has no way to get in, I guess. Hmm. And does it matter? Is it just um as long as I keep uh keep control, um, that's where I think it won't matter. Yeah, I can always keep control of this. It's just a dead drawn position. 
That was a good game. Um, let's take a look earlier. I, I feel like I had some advantage here. I wanna, oh, yeah, I want to know, was this, was it right to take there? No. I see I had a good size advantage. I should not have taken there. I simplified when I shouldn't have. I should have forced him to take. That gave away some. I still have a decent advantage. Still got a decent advantage. That was a bad move. Okay, yeah, e5 was a bad move. Got to go here. Keep, uh, just keep some pressure on the game. Now, I guess, even so, I think if, if I'm, what I should have done is even earlier, I should like it, like the, like the suggestion was, is instead of, so after, after this, Oh, interesting. Now it's saying um, see this is actually what I was looking at. That was that was my other move right there. And then I can run the G pawn up the board and just gain a lot of space on on a for a king side attack. I don't know why I didn't do that. I mean normally like nine out of ten times I would just play F F four there and uh, and have a Pretty easy plan. Just put the king in the corner on h8, and then uh, run the pawn up to g up to g5. Maybe throw an h5, bring the rooks over, and just um, just gain space on the on the king side. Uh, yeah, it looks it's pretty good there. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, thanks for watching. We'll uh, talk to you all later. Bye bye.